Hello, and welcome back to the Bates Museum of Art podcast. Today's episode is part of the series, Considering Truth, Objectivity, and Politics in Documentary Photography. My name is Samantha Quatrano, and I'm here with my co-host, Mira McVeary. And today we will be delving in to how Bernice Abbott uses photographic documentation to represent marginalized groups with her 1965 photograph titled Lobster Car. We will also be discussing the history of the main lobstering industry and the truth value of Abbott's photograph. This photograph and all other media referenced throughout this episode will be linked on the Bates Museum of Art podcast website. So let's begin. Lobstering is a large source of income for many Maine families. In fact, according to the Evolution of Maine co-management law, quote, in 1978, approximately 20% of all lobster license holders were considered full-time fishermen. In 1997, an estimated 58.3% earned 75 to 100% of their income from the lobster fishery, end quote. That's a dramatic increase of 38.3% over just 19 years. Lobstering is a practice passed through generations and is quite territorial. There are multiple instances of lobstermen cutting others' traps or threatening violence to show that they own the area. But lobstermen have been seeing more legislative pushback. Just as recently as January of 2023, Maine legislators gave lobstermen a six-year delay of regulation changes. Environmentalist groups have been working to restrict the dangerous tools lobstermen use that threaten the lives of the North Atlantic right whale species, and overhunted species being killed off by fishing equipment. These pushes for new regulations are highly controversial in fishing communities across Maine. So have they tried to do things like this before? Actually, they have. From 1956 to 1995, Legislators pitched 17 proposals trying to limit the number of traps lobstermen could have. The state has long struggled with finding a balance between preserving the lobster population, maintaining stable sales for the industry, and preventing harm to other species. Lobstermen work in rough conditions, receiving meager payouts dictated by varying market prices, and the consumers are paying prices that just keep increasing. So why do we continue to ignore blue-collar workers, and what role does this play in the voice of documentary photography? Well, when we look at the role of photography in the documentation of history and culture, we must first consider the photo itself. Looking closely at Bernice Abbott's photograph, Lobster Car, we can see that the focal point is a half-submerged wooden lobster trap, cutting diagonally across the center of the composition. There is a clear ebb and flow of the tide in this image. The geometry of the lobster car pushes into the peaceful space of the ocean, and this juxtaposition of the alien lobster car against a natural environment would normally suggest disruption, but instead, the worn wood of the box suggests the ocean and the box have melded into one. The ropes lead our eye through the shadows in the lower half of the image and off the frame to the boat that Abbott is standing on. The lid of the car is closed, which leaves us wondering what's inside. The unseen and untold histories of those whose lives depend on this simple box? The front of the wooden box is hidden in shadow. We can almost see it blend into the water below. This chiaroscuro helps our brain divide the image into logical areas of light and dark. The overexposed upper edges of the print open the top half of the image, giving it a sense of space that surrounds the box, almost like a building imposed onto a skyline. The blend of these two elements in the image gives us a window into Abbott's ideas about the relationships of natural and unnatural.
Bernice Abbott was an influential American photographer, known for her documentary photography and her commitment to capturing the different energies of both urban and rural life across the 20th century. Born in Springfield, Ohio, she eventually settled down in Monson, Maine for its peaceful charm following her city explorations. Throughout her life, Abbott was fiercely devoted to her craft. She was incredibly independent in her photographic practice, and this allowed her to be extremely mobile and pour a lot of time and energy into her photography. But Abbott was often faced with criticism and judgment because of her alternative lifestyle. Abbott recalled going to take photographs in the Bowery, a neighborhood in Lower Manhattan, and being stopped by a man who said, nice girls don't go to the Bowery. To which Abbott replied, well, I'm not a nice girl. I'm a photographer. I go anywhere. Given that she was born in and settled down in the United States, it's interesting that the majority of her work and large projects are captured throughout Europe. Well, Abbott actually spent a lot of time in Paris, where she studied photography under the surrealist artist Man Ray. When she eventually came back to the United States, Abbott embarked on a project that would become one of her most famous bodies of work. It was titled Changing New York. From 1935 to 1939, she documented the rapidly changing cityscape of New York City, capturing its architecture, neighborhoods, and street life. Abbott's photographs in this series were characterized by their sharp focus, strong composition, and ability to reveal the character of her subject. Abbott continued to explore various themes throughout her career. After spending most of her life in Paris and New York, she decided to buy a home in Maine in 1954. Abbott used this time to capture the simplicity and charm of rural coastal life. Abbott spent a lot of time with local sailors and lobstermen, which eventually inspired her to capture her lobster car photograph. In this photograph, since we're looking downward at the lobster car, we can tell that Abbott positions herself from above almost as if she's examining this lobster car like it's a specimen and exposing its history as well as the lives of its owners. This aspect of documenting history through photography gives voices to lobstermen who have historically been overlooked. Abbott is capturing this photo to document the present and the fact that photographers have the ability to do that in such impactful ways is one of the most integral parts of photography. Abbott's pictures hold this artistic energy while they also remain rooted in the truth. Now, considering intention alongside the truth value of this photograph, we must discuss whether or not a photographer's intention changes the objective truth of the subject and history captured. It can be hard to tell exactly what the intentions are in capturing an image, but when a photographer makes the decisive choice to capture a photograph, we know there is a greater narrative at play. The act of choice to capture a moment in time and transform it into a tangible document reflects the objective truth that a photographer sees. When this is layered with the subjective viewpoints of the photographer along with the viewer, we can see how the truth value of images can fluctuate based on certain biases and intentions. During an interview, Abbott had stated that she is after, quote, the realism of the subject itself, end quote. Her intention as a photographer to capture the history and realism of the subject is a fundamental practice she prides herself in. I think realism is the key word here. The works Abbott created over the course of her life serves as a record or archive of the events of the 20th century. After photographing some of the biggest cities in the world, it makes us wonder, what did Abbott find so noteworthy about a small town in Maine? Abbott implores many techniques in her photography. For example, the rope in the foreground of the image. The rope begins at the bottom of the photo, moving in the direction of Abbott's camera and leading the eye of the viewer to the lobster car. This technique reminds me of a 1970 photograph by Kenneth Josephson called New York State. 
In this image, we see a hand outstretched over a calm, empty body of water. In this hand is another black and white photograph of a boat. Josephson uses a similar technique in that his arm is in front of the camera, coming from the bottom of the frame. It gives a similar effect of leading our eye to the subject. This technique is effective in connecting with the audience. Both of these images place the subject at a distance from the viewer, but find a way to bridge the gap. With the use of a rope or an arm in the foreground of the image, the photographer creates a better connection with the audience. However, I see a different technique used in Abbott's 1933 New York at Night photograph, where she does not bridge that connection for the audience and takes on a more observatory role. In New York at night, Abbott is taking the photo from a rooftop, higher than all other buildings captured in the image. As the title suggests, this photo is taken at night, and we can view, through the black and white photograph, that people are home with their lights on. This highlights the city that never sleeps quality of New York. Abbott's images of New York are so different from her lobster car image. This picture is a great example of how Abbott's style is consistent, but her subjects dramatically changed over her lifetime. Abbott took pride in her ability to capture the essence of a wide range of subjects. While she was interviewed about her photography in New York, she said, quote, Many interesting things aren't photogenic at all, but if it is photography, it must be photogenic. That is, it has to have shapes and forms and lights and darks and lend itself to a photograph. I think I was very good at that because I was a natural photographer, end quote. When we look closer, we can see that Lobster Car and New York at Night do have some similarities, even though the pictures are of completely different areas. This idea of boxes and geometric shapes is present in both of these images. She does a great job of representing these two very different environments, both in ways that honor their heritage and story. After looking at these images, it's obvious that Bernice Abbott fulfilled her mission to capture the duality of life across the 20th century. Bernice Abbott draws attention to this with her lobster car photograph and uses her photographic voice to display the struggles of unseen, marginalized laborers during this time. When examining documentary photographs, it's important to consider who is being represented and who is unseen in the image. Even a simple photograph of a lobster car that might seem insignificant at first glance is actually part of a historic and cultural archive. So next time you come across a photograph, consider how it might be tied to a greater narrative. Remember, if you want to see any of the images we discussed in this episode, you can access those on the Bates Museum of Art podcast website. Finally, be sure to tune in for next week's podcast of the considering truth, objectivity, and politics in documentary photography series. And please, enjoy the rest of your day.